It was amazing meeting all these people from all of these places who've been facing similar problems as me or as the company. And it's nice just talking to people in the hallways after the talk, during talks, between talks. So, uh, why does this thing not work? Okay, so um, I'm, yeah, I'm responsible for our core library and as such as I recently needed to add like a whole bunch of structured binding support to a bunch of types. So if you have a custom tuple type or whatever, um, what you can do is you can like, you need to uh, specialize get um, to like get the thing. This is really, in. is there no other shortcut to get the, <laughs> okay. Um, and, uh, and then the tuple size. Um, this makes sense. But you also need to specialize the tuple element to get like the type of the thing. Um, and like, an, like I got annoyed writing this for the second time and I had like a couple more types to go and I was like, why do I really need to do that, right? Because like we just want the type, right? And we have like get, which gives, gets you the thing. So can't you just do this, right? Just take a type get. Um, and instead of doing my job and writing the specialization, I spent the rest of the day trying to figure out why this one doesn't work. Um, and it immediately breaks because tuple element does not represent value category. So if you have a tuple of int, um, then get gives you like um, of an L value gives an L value reference and get of an R value reference gives you an R value reference. Um, so far so good, but like tuple element is just int, right? Because that's the type in the tuple. Um, no problem, we can just remove the reference. Um, and now it's like int for a tuple of ints. Uh, but of course, like a tuple itself can contain a reference. Um, and then like get gives you the reference, but we strip it and then the tuple element would not be int ref, which is what we want. So we, if the tuple contains a reference, we must not strip the reference. Um, so how do we detect that? Well, call get twice. Uh, once on an L value, once on an R value. If that is the same type, then the tuple contains an L value reference because otherwise we would like change the thing. Um, and so if that's the case, we keep it, otherwise we strip the reference test. Um, this works great, except when the tuple contains an R value reference. Um, because if it contains an R value reference, then get on an L value will still give you an L value reference because we don't want an implicit move. It only works on an R value reference. But of course, this breaks our detection um, because right, the, this should be int ref ref, but we, it's a different type, so we will strip the reference -ness. Uh, no problem, just call it twice on const and non-const. Um, also make sure to like call it on the R value so you actually get the R value reference. So if that's the same type, then we, uh, like it's a reference, otherwise uh, we strip it. Now this works for essentially all types, except one. Um, so in our code base, tuple is a range, so you can call transform on it, which gives a thing that like lazily transforms the tuple. Um, and then my tuple element instantiates the function twice, once on like a const and once on the non-const, which is expensive and also might not compile because the function might not expect the const thing. And then also might do weird things depending on the R value-ness, it might do an in-place move optimization and stuff like that, and then we break the check in a whole bunch of places, right? So this doesn't really work, like I can't really make it generic. And so I thought to myself, okay, if I can't make it, why do I need tuple element in the first place? Right? So. We want to know what is the i-th type of a tuple, and there are two answers. Uh, one that respects the value category and constantness of the tuple object, and one that doesn't. Um, and the first one is get, and the second one is tuple element. Except it isn't, uh, because tuple element, element does respect const. So if you have a const tuple, it will give you a const int for some reason. Like, I don't know why it behaves like that, and I don't know whether that's ever useful. Because, like, you care about the value category of the thing, right? You just want to, you want to know what to do with it, right? So, so like decal type get always is the correct thing. And also like in weird cases like transform, um, there isn't really a thing that you can maybe return as a type that like ignores the value category because it like inherently depends on the value category. So like when you write your own code, you should essentially never use tuple element, just use decal type get with the appropriate value category. And like structured bindings require tuple elements, but like, CPP reference says like we create like a reference to tuple element and that is an L value reference if the tuple is an L value and an R value otherwise. And like this is the behavior of decal type. Why doesn't just use decal type get? Why does it go by a tuple element? Like I go through all this trouble to like synthesize tuple element based on get and then just undoes that to give me get anyway. Right? Like what, what's, what's going on here? Like this is really annoying. So I like Oh, I'm uh, 30 seconds, so I can do this slide. So I really didn't want to write the specializations. Um, 
so I found a way to synthesize that correctly. Um, this is because we sort of have like a whole bunch of stuff to like this, this we essentially have like special references to temporaries. And if you call get on a temporary, this handles that correctly. And if the result is a, is a temporary itself, then we know that the lifetime of the thing depends on the lifetime of the tuple, um, which means it's, a, it's not a reference, uh, right? And then we strip that. And if you want to know more about that, I gave a talk about that at last year's C++ on C, uh, this year's, um, where I implemented that. And I'm out of time, uh, join me. I have, if you come to my talk tomorrow, I have our L value, R value socks, which are incredibly fitting. Um, I can disagree with them there. Thank you.